And let's bring in Republican strategist Susan Del Pesio and Cyrus Beschloss, founder of the Generation Lab, and Patrick Gaspard, president and CEO of the Center for American Progress and a former U.S. ambassador to South Africa. Welcome all. Thank you very much. So, Cyrus, in terms of early voting, the youth vote that you study has dropped dramatically so far in early voting from two years ago, uh, according to Politico, their analysis. So far, Target Smart says that the youth vote is in single digits in a number of states. Where do you see the motivation? What do you see in terms of your, your surveys show that they have about 34 percent say that they intend to vote? Exactly. Here to say two things uh, that can be true at the same time. One, I think we're going to see record-busting rates of young people out to vote on Tuesday. Second thing I want to say, I don't think we're going to see that many young people voting on Tuesday compared to larger, uh, older age blocks. Uh, and I think that that says something about the state of the youth vote. We're seeing incremental progress. We saw about 16 percent or so in uh, 2014. We saw about 35 percent in 2018. Uh, we might see a record breaker in this case, but we're still talking about way, few, way too few young people voting uh, to be comfortable as a society, as a democracy. Well, how do you get people, young people, more interested in voting? Is it the quality of the candidates, the issues? just not caring about it? Yeah. yeah. The, the two things that I always like to say, one is you can't change the issues that young people care about. Young people care about the issues that most other age brackets care about. you got to change the message. Change the way that you're delivering that message. Not necessarily the content, but the packaging. Uh, that's one thing. And uh, I'll leave it there. Uh, well... Susan, both parties want the youth vote. The Democrats, in particular, really are hungry for a youth vote to get some of these very tight races across the finish line. How do they reach them? Well, I think that Sarah's talked about something very, very interesting in how you talk to them. What methods do you talk to them? I mean, you can't put in a television ad that only runs on cable news. It's got to show up on their phones or their computers, or otherwise it, the message is not reaching them. Because I do believe that messaging is important, and the issues are shared issues. But I can also tell you as an operative, if you're relying on the youth vote right now, you don't have much of a chance, but you need to get everything else that out there that has a proven record of showing up. Uh, what about TikTok, Cyrus? Is that oh, yeah. one way to get to young people? That's an effective strategy. You've got to go to where they are. They are on TikTok, absolutely. But don't get on TikTok and talk about issues that you assume young people are going to care about. You know, don't talk about the rock and roll A-tracks and the this and that. <laughs> go, talk, go talk about income inequality. Go talk about inflation. Go talk about crime. Just do it in a place that they're actually going to listen to you. And Susan, what about the Democrats? And you know, the, the... Susan, I just wanted to ask you also about the Democrats mm -hmm. before I bring in Patrick. What do you see as a Republican operative in terms of what Democrats, you know, are failing to do so far? I think that they are failing to speak with. Any demographic, whether it's the youth vote or anywhere along the line, instead they're talking at them. Instead of trying to be relatable, they're telling people what they need, they think they need to know. But you know what? People know that their, their dollar's not going as far as it used to. People know that when they go to the gas pump, they're paying more. People know that they don't feel safe. Don't tell them they shouldn't feel safe because of crime statistics if they don't feel safe going on the subway, for example. So I think Democrats have a much more important job to speak with people than at them. So, Patrick, what now do the Democrats have to do? You've got four days left. Arguably, you know, some people say that the abortion issue, the Dobbs issue, was so energizing, but it was back in June and July, and that, you know, Democrats spent a lot of money advertising on it and messaging on it, but didn't catch up to what was happening in the economy as gas prices went back up. Thank you for having me on, Andrea, and thank you for that fantastic question. I know that June and July may seem like eons uh, in the media ecosystem that we're in right now, but for average folk, uh, it was just uh, yesterday, and they're still feeling the impact of the Dobbs decision in their lives, particularly uh, in districts that are being overwhelmed 
by women who have to come from some of these ruby red deep uh, districts uh, in order to get reproductive services. So I just want to say that there. You know, Cyrus uh, and Susan said a lot of really important things about uh, youth turnout, but I'm going to remind all of us that we're seeing historic already, historic levels of early participation uh, in early vote with close to 30 million Americans having participated already. There's a lot of interest, there's a lot of energy in this campaign. And uh, as a consequence, we're seeing Democrats running dead uh, even in key uh, Senate states uh, and doing uh, better than expected in governorships uh, and uh, are highly competitive in congressional uh, races as uh, well. So right now, Democrats have to continue to drive a hard contrast between what they've achieved, uh, what Republicans have said they're going to do in the next Congress, uh, and what Democrats intend to do to keep pushing uh, prices down uh, to address uh, the crime issue. They have to remind Americans that eight of the 10 states uh, with the highest murder rates are led by Republican governors, and most of that's driven by gun crime and the kind of legislation that Republicans are blocking. They have to remind them that we're at the lowest unemployment that we've had in 50 years. Uh, and that's mostly as a consequence of the legislation passed by Biden, Pelosi, Schumer, uh, and Democrats, uh, and that Republicans have already said they intend to go right out Social Security uh, and Medicare should they be in the majority. Elections are about choices. They're about contrast. Democrats have a chance to make that case in these closing days. Patrick Gaspard, thank you so much. And Susan Del Percio and Cyrus Beschloss, thanks to both of you.